be like this road down and there'd be houses, 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 houses that go down. And then our house was right down here and then the water, you know, like you just walk to the yeah. front of Buds and then Johnny and then uh, Aunt Ellen and Uncle John and then you'd be down, down the water. And big bitchin' rock you could sit on and watch the ocean. For hours. Dad and mom, um, Dad really, you know, wanted to have a place down there because his sister and her husband had one, and mom was that was the one thing she agreed with Dad about was to, you know, have a place to go down to. So he set to building it. Dickie started with him, and then things didn't work really? out. Yeah, Dick will always tell you he built that house, or they were his plans, or whatever. And the truth is that he did map up a plan they were going to do it together and then they butted heads and it didn't happen and you know dick's version is, is that i built that yeah, house yeah. yeah um that's who yeah okay. oh yeah so when me and my aunt moved down there we were totally solar no electricity and we had this little tv that, that dad had you know it was a little nine inch black and white that thing was that the solar would <laughs> run <laughs> and me and the land and so and like susan said it was a big room and, and so me and Luann and had the bed where Dad had his bed, but we would lie in bed and watch the nine-inch TV, which you could only get Fox on, through binoculars, <laughs> in bed. He did. So, oh, no Dad way. did things in a way, ah. like, like he, he made this really nice tub that, like, never had a good spout. Right. And he, he'd make like, and he'd start the bathroom, and like the tile on this thing was really nice, but the walls were still sheetrock. And, uh, you know, you know oh, yeah. he'd make a nice tile floor, but he'd leave, you know, whatever. And uh, he would, man, we'd come down there, and we could show up at any hour. You know, we couldn't call him. So we'd call, usually call me and the kids and Louie. We'd, we'd just pick a weekend, and just we'd always show up, like, at, like, 11 or 12 at night. He'd yep. be asleep. Yeah. We'd come up the stairs. He'd get up, man. He'd turn on the lights. He'd start cooking something. And yep. we'd stay up till, like, 3 or 4 in the morning for the first night. Oh my God, they were the bomb. He would do anything for these guys, and including get up in the middle of the night and start entertaining them. And from the minute we get there, he would cook. He would cook a major breakfast. Yeah. He would cook. You know, he go go shop. Sometimes we'd go to Newport and go have lobster. Yep. We would um, go on group uh, low tide hikes. Yeah. One time, Brendan had a project that we all worked That's on right. diligently. Had to collect shells. And there yeah, was, that was really a fun shells. day. That yeah, was awesome. It would be low tide and we'd all get sticks and he'd have like hundreds of pairs of sneakers down below for everybody to put on for low tide hike. And then we go just walk for hours on the beach looking for stuff. The best low tides, man. What do I think, what? Well, at least he had not been drinking for years. And, you know, and every, you know, life changed as it does if you're lucky for the better. Can we stop in the dining Yep, we're gonna stop at the world's largest dinosaur. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's like Jurassic freaking something. Yeah. You know, mom died. Probably took a little stock. Realized he had some things that he could salvage. Oh God, I know. And. Uh, you know, he and I were working on a relationship. You know, uh, it's about uh, some kind of understanding of where, I mean, I learned a lot about my dad down in Mexico, about his upbringing, his family, his mother. Uh, they were incredibly poor, and um, the dad was a nut, and uh, sh she would like, uh, she like prostitute herself for money. To feed the kids, you know, and sometimes he was in the room. That's a drag. I heard him talking with Aunt Elwin. I didn't tell me that, but I heard him talking. I'm like, oh, well, that explains a few things. Yeah. Eh? Yeah. You know, he was on his own when he was 15 because the situation was so screwed up. So there was some insight for me, and I uh, tend to be a. Uh, I'm a person, this is a big long journey, you know, and you can either stay stuck in one segment of your journey, you know, and in a blameful mode to the universe and to whoever, but 
thing about pain and, and things that happen to you, it's not as if they go away, but if you live in a pain that happened at a certain time, you're not being present in your life, which is into the future. That happened then, your pain is then. So you spend the rest of the time healing from your pain, if you choose to. I cut my dad a lot of slack because that's what human beings, unless you are innately evil, which contrary to other opinions, which everyone is entitled to, my dad was not. My dad was an injured child who brought his injuries into his family and then shared them with them. And, and that's where I think when you say what changed, you know, I'm, you can't be by yourself and you always know when you're alone the truth. So I'm going to just assume he sat around one day and went, all right, I've got this much time left. I have these gifts. What am I going to do with them? It was um, the night that I come to stay um, with mom and uh, um, came to stay and take care of my mother with my father. My dad was there and I hadn't slept under the roof with him since I was 13. And so I had a very big idea that I was going to set it straight. I did. And I said, I, because I knew I couldn't sleep there and do what I needed to do for mom with him and her best friend without saying something. I'm not playing that game anymore. Like, we're not going to talk about anything. We're just going to pretend everything was great and nothing happened. I was not, I was far enough along to know that. So I just kind of told him. Uh, that um, before I was unpacking, that I needed an apology from him. And in his true fucking punk ass bug way, he went, oh really? <laughs> and he said, well, if I hurt you, I am very sorry. And I just went, that'll do, dude. We got a big mission in front of us and I'll check with you later, but it's good enough for now and I'll, you know. You know, you know, we spent a month and a half caring for my mother together. You know, a lot transpires during something like that. And it's not us. So, I was good enough. You know, it's like, what the fuck, you know? I'm not interested in the past. And, and, and it wasn't Bud's job to fix me just because he broke me. It was his job to own up to his part. And as I say, it was half-assed, but it was just a real stupid, that's like when you really hurt somebody and you're embarrassed, you go, well, I'm sorry. And it's like, oh yeah, that really felt like I'm sorry. You know, you know, you know. And the years to come spoke of it. So that, that's, that's how I am. Bob, smell how Russ's feet never smell. I don't want to get near Russ. <laughs> You'll be surprised. Come on, Bob. Come on, smell his feet. Come on, Bob, smell his feet. You're no fun. You're out here in Canada. You just got an A.